Hi guys, welcome to the video on large language models which are trending in these days and GPT-4 is already arrived. And in this video, we'll explore how these models are changing the way we interact with natural language. From chatbots to language translations, large language models are the backbone of range of cutting edge applications. And today, we'll dive into the technical and functional details of these powerful tools. First, let's understand the meaning of these large language models. So these models are machine learning models who are learned to predict the probability of a sequence of word given the context. So if we give a sentence to these uh, models, then they are trying to understand the context of their sentence and then try to predict what comes next or what is the response of that text. They are typically trained on massive datasets of text and use a neural network architecture to predict what comes next. One of the most powerful large language models on the market today is GPT-4. And in its uh, pre, uh, previous version, that is GPT-3, it has around 175 billion parameters and generate human-like text with remarkable accuracy. In GPT-4, which is even more powerful than GPT-3, has 1 trillion parameters. It's remarkable and scary at the same time. So, have you wondered that uh, how these large language models like GPT-4 are able to generate such realistic and uh, coherent text. So the answer lies in the, in the technique that is called self-attention. Self-attention is a technique that allows the model to understand the context of the input sequence and generate predictions based on the context of that input sequence. So at a very high level, large language models are trained using a massive amount of text data such as books, articles and websites. The model is then fine-tuned on a very specific task, such as language translation or text generation. The key to the success of these large language models is the ability to use self-attention to the focus on different parts of the input sequence depending on the context. So if you are giving a sentence, giving an input sentence to these models, then they are trying to focus on different different parts of, of that sentence so that it can understand the context of each part of the sentence very differently and completely. So self-attention allows the models to weigh the importance of each word in the input sequence when making predictions about the next word. So let's take a very closer look on uh, how self-attention works. When the model receives the input sequence, it first creates embeddings for each word in the sequence. These embeddings are vectors that represent the meaning of each word in the context of the input sequence. So, next, model calculate three types of vectors for each word. The first vector is query vector, second vector is the key vector, third vector is the value vector. So, these vectors are used to calculate the attention score for each word in the sequence. The attention score reflects how important each word is is to the context of the input sequence. The attention score are then used to weigh the value vectors for each word. The weighted value vectors are then summed up to produce a context vector, which represents the context of the input sequence. The context vector is then used to predict the probability of the next word in the sequence. The output of the model is the probability distribution over the vocabulary, which can be sampled to generate new texts. But how these models learn to make accurate predictions? So, during training, the model is given an input sequence and asked to predict the next word in the sequence. The predicted word is then compared to the actual next word in the sequence, and the model parameters are adjusted to minimize the difference between the predicted word and the actual next word. The process is repeated millions of times on a massive amount of text data, allowing the model to learn the patterns and structure of the language. One of the most exciting things about this large language model is the ability to generate realistic and human-like text. For example, GPT-4 can generate articles, poetry, blogs, codes with an impressive accuracy. Let's take a look at the coding example using the GPT API Suppose we want to generate a Python code to solve a specific prob uh, problem 
and we can input the problem statement and then let the model generate the code for us. In this example, I'll use the Python to generate text based on a given prompt. First, I will install the OpenAI package and authenticate with our API keys. Then, I will define our prompt and set some parameters for text generation. And uh, finally, I will call the API and print out the generated text. Like that is the like complete uh, architecture or the steps for uh, uh, building a JetGPT API. So as you see that I build a fu uh, function here to generate the code that uh, I give a prompt to write a Python code. So it, it will write the Python code for every problem statement I give it to this prompt. So as I give that uh, find odd and even number in the array, then it uh, easily generate a sample array and then build a, fu uh, build a complete code around it. That is like a completely remarkable task. So in the next thing that uh, I use the uh, ChatGPT API to use to perform sentiment analysis on a given text. The API called with the prompt parameter set to a string containing the text and then analyze that text and the prompt for a API to respond with the sentiment. The max tokens parameter is set to one to ensure that the API only return a single word response, positive, negative, neutral. And the temperature is set to 0 0.7 to control the level of randomness in the generated text. So it can e easily uh, see my text that uh, I give it to it. Then it generate that uh, what is the sentiment of that uh, text. So that is completely correct. And uh, in the next thing that I do is do a language translation task by using this API. The API is called with a prompt parameter set to a string containing the text to translate and the prompt for the API to respond with the translated text. The max token is set to 1024 because uh, it can generate like a, a long string as well based on the uh, destination language and the temperature is set to 0 0.7 to control the randomness in the generated text. So, as you can see, it will uh, easily generate my text to Hindi and uh, French. So th that is like completely uh, remarkable thing. So in the uh, next thing, if I just say, it is a uh, like a chatbot kind of thing that I uh, built by using the same uh, API. I just uh, give a, a prompt to this API and it will uh, respond ar around that prompt. Uh, like I just say it to, uh, how are you? It's saying I'm doing well, thank you, how about you? And I say, what are you? It say, I am a human. Because this, the uh, prompt that I am uh, giving to this API is not very correct. So if, if you are like uh, uh, giving a very correct prompt to this APIs, they can do that uh, spe specific task with the create accuracy as well. So the next thing we talk about the applications of these large language models. So applications of these large language models are like uh, way too many. We can build like uh, uh, language trans translators by using it, code generators, text generators, chatbots for uh, like uh, different different applications as well. So applications are like so many applications are there in the uh, market I you see. So at the end of this video, large language models are the changing the way we interact with the natural language and driving the development of range of exciting applications from their neural network architecture to their self retention mechanism. These models are pushing the boundaries of what is possible with machine learning. We hope this video has given you a deeper understanding to these powerful tools and their potential for the future. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Thank you guys.